Dr Ling, thanks for talking to us today. Um, how long have you been a GP at Mount Druid? Yes, I've been working in Mount Druid for about 14 years at this practice now. Prior to that, I did my general practice training up in the Central Coast. So I actually did all my intern years and resident years at Gosford Hospital before continuing on with the general practice training program up there. So I worked in Carryong, um, Lake Macquarie sort of region for a couple of years before coming back down and joining this practice here. So I've been here, well, pretty much ever since I finished with the training program. So Dr. Ling, what are the things that you most enjoy about being a general practitioner? I think with, when it comes to general practice, there are really two things which stand out the most. One of them is variety and the second one is the people. One of the things which I really enjoy most is that continuity of care. It's getting to know a person and their family and their role in society. It's also important to get to know where someone fits in a community and I suppose for someone like myself and a lot of general practitioners in areas who have been practicing for a while, um, it's also becoming part of that community. So for example, a lot of the work I do is not just what we do in the practice, but what we also do with local schools and local health campaigns. And it's all about fitting into the whole community. So again, uh, what I would consider to be the best things about working as a general practitioner are getting to know patients for their whole life and actually helping them and seeing them develop in all ways and of course seeing the rest of the family and seeing it as a true family sort of uh, a true family care. So what are some things that you think that general practitioners do that you think deserve more recognition? I think there's a huge under recognition of the potential and the power which is available in general practice. The power of knowing your patients and actually knowing uh, what the individual drivers and motivating factors are for each person, as well as their individual desires, their individual wishes, as well as their barriers, is a, uh, is a very important thing when it comes to providing good holistic health care. And general practice, again, is one of those few areas where because of that ongoing relationship which is developed with the patient, um, a general practitioner is able to um, effect changes and to influence change in ways which very few other areas of the health profession, which very few other areas in health provision are able to do. So this is one of those, I think, under-recognized things. The other factors with general practice, which are, I think, under-recognized, are actually the scope of what general practitioners are able to do. I think that um, there has been a tendency to see general practice as a sort of either low-level emergency department dealing with coughs and colds or dealing with very episodic care, whereas I would say that most of my day is spent on what, well, what would be called chronic disease management. And certainly I would say that most of my patients are those for uh, whom I see not just uh, individually, but I would see in the context of their families, their family life, and I would treat them for all of their many varied illnesses throughout their life. And I think one of the great joys of general practice has been, in fact, this ability, this capacity to see patients as they develop, as they grow, and as they, well, as they, as they go through their whole life. And what do you think the biggest hurdles are facing general practitioners in Western Sydney at the moment? Yes, that's always a very difficult answer to, or question to answer because there are actually so many different hurdles which face general practice at this point in time. I think one of the largest things that we, one of the largest problems we face is the issue of workforce and continuity. Um, it is, I think, getting increasingly difficult to recruit good general practitioners to Western Sydney. And it's something which is a common theme which comes up amongst all the doctors here. But there are probably multiple reasons why that is so. And so those would then constitute some of those problems that we face as well. Other hurdles that we face, however, are issues uh, that I've alluded to, such as the under-recognition of what general practice is able to do. And therefore, if you like, um, the, the potential dumbing down of general practice, because uh, once a practitioner starts doing less, there is the risk that they will become de-skilled. So these are issues which relate to how easy it is uh, to recruit general practitioners to a specific area. And do you have any ideas about how these can be addressed? I think that a lot of what we need to do 
comes, has to come from general practice itself. General practice, I think, does need to promote itself more. And I do think that there needs to be greater recognition of what general practice is able to do. Some of this has to come from general practice. I think some of this also has to come at the teaching levels. And this includes starting at the very basics at university levels and at hospital levels. I think there is a certain irony in the fact that um, all general practitioners have had to work in hospitals and, at, uh, and with various specialists at some point in time, but increasingly we are seeing specialists who have not had any general practice experience at all. And increasingly we are seeing evidence of what we call the, uh, the culture of referral emerging from hospitals where patients may be referred all over the place without any particular heed to their overall well-being, largely because each person or each practitioner in the system is only happy to deal with their one individual area of specialty. Whereas I think that what we find in general practice is that there are many things which can be dealt with and which can be more efficiently dealt with as a one-stop sort of facility for patients. And um, this has great potential benefits not just for the patient but for the community as a whole. Now another hurdle that uh, or another way of trying to address these issues I think is for general practice to really um, show to new graduates and to new uh, and to undergraduates as well what the scope of the profession really involves. Um, at some point I do think that there will be a need to look at how the whole structure of healthcare is delivered in Australia because General practice does need help to fulfill a lot of its potential and I think that as a whole we need to look at this question uh, at a population basis. When we talk to our newer doctors and our newer graduates, I think it's also going to be very important to recognize that their needs may not be the same as the older general practitioners, but that we need to take these into account, but that general practice is also able to accommodate all of this.